Hello and welcome. Let's take a look at the top story that we are tracking for you. India Shanvaran 3 has sent in the first observations from the payload on board Vikram lander. A temperature profile of the lunar south pole has been sent in for the first time ever. Detailed observations are underway. The payload, named Chandra's Surface Thermophysical Experiment, or CHAST, measures the temperature's profile of the lunar topsoil around the pole. Now, this enables an understanding of the thermal behavior of the moon's surface. The CHASE payload has a temperature probe equipped with a controlled penetration mechanism. It is capable of reaching a depth of 10 centimeters beneath the surface, and the probe is fitted with 10 individual temperature sensors. The presented graph illustrates the temperature variations of the lunar surface and near the surface at various depths, as recorded during the probe's penetration. As visible from the graph, a depth of 80 millimeters shows a temperature of minus 10 degrees Celsius. The CHASE payload has been developed by a team led by the Space Physics Laboratory. Now, Vikram Sarabi Space Center, or the VSSC, and the Physics Research Laboratory in Ahmedabad in Gujarat State. Now, for more on this, we are being joined by our senior correspondent, Siddharth MP, from Chennai. Hello to you, Siddharth. Now, India Chandrayaan-3 has sent in the first observations from the payload on board the Vikram lander. Take us through the significance of this and the observations that are currently underway. Hello, Alison. So let's start by saying that uh, this is the first scientific breakthrough for the Chandrayaan-3 mission. In fact, there were three technology demonstrations that Chandrayaan-3 was supposed to do. All three are completed. The first one is for the Luna soft landing to happen safely and exactly as planned. That happened on August 23rd. And you know, on August 24th, what happened was that the rover or the Pragyan rover on board rolled out of the ramp. And the Pragyan rover right now, as we speak, is traversing the Luna South Pole and the nearby regions. Of course, this is just in and around the land it's not going really far but in and around the lander the Pragyan rover is traversing the lunar surface doing its own experiments the third is that both the lander's payloads and the rover's payloads and of course the payload on board the propulsion module all three of the Chandrayaan 3's components will have to switch on their payloads and that is also in progress and all payloads are working uh, very well and as expected that's what ISRO has said so as far as the three basic technology demonstration is concerned it's complete and this mission is a total success next we are moving on to the Phase where the science you know goals of this mission are beginning to give returns so each of these payloads on board are meant with for a specific purpose they're meant to give scientific findings and then make discoveries that are first of its kind in the world because this is the first craft to soft land near the South Pole Allison so this time around what has happened is the Chaste payload as you just mentioned has found out that there are extreme temperature variations in the lunar soil so what has happened is there's a sort of probe, a 10 centimeter long probe that has been drilled into the lunar soil. So the observation is something radical and drastic. What it is understood is that on the top soil or, or on the topmost surface of the lunar soil uh, near the south pole, the temperature is very high. It's 50 degrees centigrade, which is among the highest temperatures you will find on Earth. But just 8 centimeters below that or barely the length of a sm average smartphone today. That's it. 8 centimeters below that particular point, you have a minus... 10 degrees centigrade which is freezing cold temperatures and which is winter temperatures in some of the frigid regions of the world so minus 10 and uh, 50 degrees centigrade we're seeing 60 degrees variation in just about 8 centimeters of difference and 8 centimeters of depth into the lunar soil this goes on to show various things this goes on to show that there is uh, th this lunar soil essentially is not a great conductor of heat because barely 8 centimeters separating the top layer and the bottom layer and then you have minus temperature at the bottom layer and at the top topmost layer you have temperatures of as close to 50 degrees centigrade so 60 degrees is the extreme temperature variation between th these two places to give more context to our viewers so 50 degrees is the temperature you would have in the deserts of Rajasthan in India and you know minus 10 is the temperature minus 10 degrees Celsius is the temperature you would have in Jammu and Kashmir the northernmost regions of India during the winters so these two places are at least 500 kilometers apart and the, there are varying terrains and varying topographies in these regions but just 8 centimeters of variation on the 
lunar soil and you are seeing that the temperatures are varying by almost 60 degrees between 10 and uh, between 10 50 degrees centigrade and minus 10 degrees centigrade so this is a significant find as far as this mission goes and this also goes on to prove that uh, you know there are so many uh, variations in temperatures in different parts of the lunar surface in fact it's established earlier in nasa's missions as well nasa has a mission known as lunar reconnaissance orbiter so the lro had also identified that sometimes the variation on the lunar surface is extreme during the lunar day the temperature could be as much as 120 degrees centigrade which would you know virtually boil anything water boils at 100 degrees centigrade and then during the lunar night the temperature can go as low as minus 130 degrees centigrade which is twice as much as the coldest temperatures anywhere on earth and uh, this is the kind of you know science that is expected to emerge and as far as nasa is concerned they've only gone to the equatorial regions but chandrayaan 3 is um you know, lander and rover, both of them are near the South Pole. So every single find that they derive from the South Pole will unlock a minefield because this is a region that has not been explored so far, Alison. Right. Now, Siddharth, take us through just uh, the importance of the understanding of this thermal behavior of the moon's surface. And has there been any word from the uh, ISRO scientists on uh, whether they have found anything like the water ice that they were looking for on the South Pole of the Moon? So we're just in the initial days. So if you remember right, Alison, there's just uh, four days that are passed since the lunar landing. So this entire exploration process goes on in a very phased manner. So one by one, the payloads are switched on. So now that both the lander and rover are functional, we have information about the understanding of the thermal properties. So far, there is no confirmation about the find, finding of water ice. But of course, that is something they will be looking into uh, over the next 10 days because this entire mission is planned for the lunar day or 14 Earth days. So one entire lunar day or 14 earth days that's the planned life of this particular mission so during the next 10 days we can expect more developments on that front with regards water rise and so on also some of the other finds that are interesting and are expected from this mission are you know of spectroscopy which is basically firing a ray of light or a laser and breaking down the lunar soil to understand its composition and understand what are the minerals that make lunar soil you know what are the constituent minerals over there what are the other rare earth elements perhaps that are available on the lunar soil so all of these could actually offer a better understanding for humanity about the lunar south pole which is the most uh, you know coveted region to explore so far so to give you uh, more perspective in fact uh, in the next one calendar year we can expect at least you know 10 to 12 lunar missions from you know international space agencies and also from private companies heading towards the moon and some of them even towards the lunar south pole and two years from now even america envisions to send astronauts as part of the artemis program towards the lunar south polar region so this is how exciting this region is this is how keen that scientists are to explore this region and as far as thermal conductivity goes and as far as the thermal properties go it's important to understand all of that you know in case in future there is a plan to ensure that there is a settlement on the moon to have humans settle on the moon to have astronauts you know settle on the moon then you would have to understand the thermal properties because anything that has to be constructed on a surface and uh, that time you'll have to understand what kind of materials to use there to withstand this kind of harsh temperatures and even extreme temperature variations on the lunar surface so this is why it's important to understand the intricacies of how temperatures can vary on the moon and it's also important to remember that the temperatures on the moon are so extreme in fact as as far as nasa's findings go there are some places near the lunar south pole some craters where the temperature can go to minus 250 degrees centigrade so this is in fact the lowest temperature found anywhere in the solar system so that is how significant the lunar south pole is and that is how important it is to study the temperature variations particularly in the crater regions and it is also in the craters that it is suspected that there would be huge reserves of water ice which of course can be used as a wonder fuel so in, in fact water ice can be separated to uh, form its constituents hydrogen and oxygen and liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen at frozen temperatures super chilled temperatures can serve as cryogenic rocket fuel so this is the significance of this particular region and you know more sciences are expected to emerge uh, as in when chandrayaan operates more of its payloads and gathers more data and even gathering data is a gradual process because first there are only initial findings that are released then the principal investigator of that respective project starts looking into that data Data. they come up with their findings then the data is shared with Indian and global academia and this is a joint effort so you know only preliminary findings are expected in the 14 days of the mission but thereafter in the coming weeks coming months and even coming years more more and more insights and valuable sciences are expected to emerge from the data that Chandrayaan 3 provides Alison we are now available in your country 
download the app now. Get all the news on the move.